Yeah. So this yeah, right. bit, I'm calling Sensei Seth versus Evil. I wanted to know what martial arts style would work best against what horror movie franchise villain. And I thought to myself, the best person to talk to about this would be Sensei Seth. And, and so, you know, I, I counted it recently. Um, I have tried, tried, so like, you know, it could be a day, could be a couple hours. Uh, 26 styles. So I've at least taken a class of 26 styles of martial arts. Which doesn't seem right, but I wrote them down. I counted. It's 26. So, I, yeah, I guess I'm just, I didn't even know I've been preparing myself to fight off movie monsters for years. You are the most qualified as of right now that I can think of. The real question is, what style would you use against yeah. them? So I'm just doing okay. five. All right, so we're going to start off with Jason Voorhees. He is the legendary character Eve of Evil from the Friday the 13th movies. He always wears yeah, the right. hockey mask, so that's also something to keep in mind. The hockey mask is important. He's probably the most built out of all of the people, minus Michael Myers, because they have about the same build. He seems sturdy for sure. Do we have a height and weight on him? I think he's probably about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he is 6'5". Oh, bam, nailed it. That was, that was a good call. Six foot five, man. So that's hard, right? Does he have the weapons? Let's go no weapons at first. Let's just say the Saul hand-to-hand -hand combat that, which by the way, in one of the, the Jason movies, like one of my favorites, it's like Jason goes to Manhattan or Jason goes to New York or something like that. There's like a scene where like one of the dudes is like an actual boxer and he gets him on the roof of this high rise in New York and he's actually piecing him up. And Jason's just kind of taking all the shots. He doesn't actually swing back in any of the shots, right? So he's just taking like heavy bag combos to the face. And the problem is, is that he had the mask on. So the boxer is piecing him up. Boxer had terrible cardio, gasses out right before he's about to hit Jason Voorhees off the edge of the building. Jason hits him one time and it was game over. Dang. Am I fighting him on the roof? Put me in a situation really quick. I would say, Jason, most likely the situation you're going to be in is you're going to be at Camp Crystal Lake. And so you're going to be like a camp counselor, right? You're in a cabin in the woods. That's a bit different than on top of a building. That would make things rather difficult. I'm going to say ninjutsu. All right. Ninjutsu. All right. You're hurting my feelings with this answer, but I got to know why. So the reason why, and I'm, I'm talking like the most ninjutsu it gets. I'm talking wearing these bad boys. You're climbing up trees. Nobody is going to see you, right? And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason's whole thing is that he's slow, right? Very slow, super slow. So what I'm thinking is you're up on trees, you're like jumping out on top of them, you're giving them a little stab in the head or a little bonk on top of the head, and you're rolling out, and then you reassess, and then you go to and do a different tree, and he's just walking around. You got plenty of time to climb up the tree, and then you come down with like an elbow, like a, like a Moiberon elbow right on top of the head, and you just keep doing that. Like a little guerrilla warfare, Mixed yep. with like a Kurosawa film. I was about to give you the hardest time when you said ninjutsu, but, but I think you have a fair point. But yeah, also you've got Shuriken right there in the background. Dude, this is our original. So like this is like like a like one of those old school pressings. So just imagine Jason with like 45 of them sticking out of them. <laughs> I do have a vision in my mind right now of like Jason Voorhees like coming at you very slowly and like shurikens just bouncing off his mask until one hits him in the jugular. Then he's just skeeting like like blood out of his neck, like just not yeah, phased by it. Yeah, but he doesn't move fast enough to get his to get his heart rate up. So it's just like one every yeah thirty seconds. Even that's kind of ominous though. He's not dead yet, but he's just kind of like slowly bleeding a little bit. I don't know, does he bleed? I mean, I, I, I think so. I mean, none of them I die. Really know. That's the bit, like none of them do die. I, then I go ninjutsu. Unless I'm on top of the building. If I'm on top of the building, 
like the boxer situation, I'm going sumo. I'm going to get underneath him, I'm going to lift, and I'm going to dump. Oh, I like it, man. I like it. Just hip toss him right off the building. I think that ninjutsu is a fair assessment. So let's go ahead and go on to number two, Chucky. He is a little tiny doll that's been possessed by a serial killer who happens to know some type of voodoo to be able to transport his soul into other bodies. So he was running from the police. He winds up getting to this doll. He does his like little seance ritual chant. And then once he does that, his soul is now in that doll. And for some odd reason, every time over the last like 20 or 30 years this thing's been around, Every time he goes to transfer his, his soul into another body, something goes awry and he can't do it. Lee, we gotta get out of this body. Can you kill Chucky? The doll itself? Every time Chucky's been killed, the issue is, is that the doll somehow is able to come back because the, the soul still occupies the doll. Man, that's tough. Does he have any specific type of strength? Or is he just kind of a menace? He's just annoying. Like, the, the only thing that really, like, gets him above everything else, which always blows my mind, is, like, I guess he must have some type of supernatural strength. Because he's kind of fast. Yeah, he is quick. He can fit in small places. Um, you yeah. know, so that's, like, one of his big things is because he is so small, he can, like, hide, like, behind car seats or, you know. And then everything's happened to this thing. I mean, it's been shot. It's been burnt. It's been stabbed, I think. And every time, it just keeps coming back. I think I think with Chucky, you kind of have to let him have the knife. Like, to give some type of an advantage? Yeah, because he's not very big. So my first thought was going to be uh, Capoeira. But, the more I think about it, your head is kind of like a bit lower for a lot of it. So, I'm thinking now that that's a bad choice. This is a hard one. Because y your hands aren't going to do anything. Punching that low is not going to happen. Yeah, it's got to be kicks. So like, you know how in one championship you're allowed to kick a grounded opponent? Chucky's pretty much a grounded opponent. He's so short. He's always a grounded short. opponent. In my yeah. mind, when I, I thought about this one, I thought Taekwondo might be the, yeah. the way to go. Yeah, I thought about that too. Let's hypothetical the other way then. Let's say you did give him okay. the knife. I think it'd be exactly the same. I think you, you would just... You would just have to hope that you can kick him before he stabs you with his little knife. I mean, you could try and wrestle him. You know, he's he's made of stitches and cotton, you guess, right? I don't, I don't really... It's more like a rubber doll. So, like, it's kind of like... You remember the old school Ninja Turtles where you could, like, pop in the sockets and stuff? Yeah. Like that, but with rubber instead of hard plastic. I would say... I would say with knife... Um, kickboxing, or I guess you could you could even say take one though, because you're not like you're gonna use your hands, you're not gonna clinch him. Um, if he does not have a knife, I'm gonna go jujitsu because you want to dismantle the parts. I want to take, I want to take, I want to get him with an arm bar, and then you know, him lose that arm forever. You put him in like a like a twister, and maybe like everything. You know, it's, it, it is very difficult to arm bar somebody with an arm like this big though. You know, it doesn't have to be about the elbow, you know, it's it's just ripping it. It's just ripping the arm. You're just using the leverage. It's, it's a doll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. I think that's a good answer. Let's go on to number three. Pinhead. I had to look Pinhead up. Okay. Pinhead has literally pins in his head all over the place. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Are they pointing in or out? They're pointing in. Like, if you hit that, it's still going to jack your hand up. Did I prepare for this situation at all? Or is it just like, he came to my house, scared me, and I was like, uh-oh, good thing I've trained in blank my whole life. Usually in the, in the, the Hellraiser movies, there's only really one person who kind of starts everything, and then maybe one or two people get caught wind of what happened. But most of the time, it's just one person aware. So all the victims are usually people who just didn't know what was going on. Let's assume I didn't know what was going on. What's his, like, usual form of attack? Yeah. Penhead usually is extremely analytical. Like, yeah. hyper-intelligent. But never actually goes hands-on. It's more like mm -hmm. using the, the power of whatever they were given to, like, throw chains. And to rip people apart doing torturous things. I, I kind of want to say jujitsu again because 
You can, he seems pretty tall. Like six foot, maybe? Pinhead is six foot five. Really? Damn. The answer of jujitsu is hard because you got to get close to him. And from what it sounds like, trying to run up to him would be a nightmare because things would just kind of like pick you apart. The weird thing about those movies that I've noticed is they always take their time. They call them Cenobites in the movies, right? But they always take their time. Like they're very slow, like most everybody else, but it's not like the Jason Voorhees reason. It's an arrogance. They're like, we're going to kill you. So like, like we got lunch maybe in three hours. We got nothing to do. So we're just going to like casually kill you. Like we have no, we got nothing else to do. Like we're retired. So we're just going to yeah. kill you, I guess for, you know, like Margaritaville, but violent, you know, I'm going to go jujitsu because one, it allows you to be roided up. So I think that would help. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, just juice to the gills, juice to the gills. Yeah. Why not? You can't really do that in any other sport. And the new sod is not going to be knocking at your door afterwards, you know? I would say jujitsu with a bit of uh, athletics work, you know, with the, with a bit of learning how to actually sprint and and actually get in quickly rather than just let him do his thing to me from a distance. And then once you get in there, I mean leg locks, because you want to stay as far away from that head as possible. I 100% agree. All right, we're going to go ahead and go into the next one. We're going to go to Mike Myers. And we're not talking Mike Myers from the Austin Powers movies. Yeah, baby, yeah. Although that I would like to see that fight as well. What we're going to talk about is Mike Myers from the Halloween movies. Similar build to Jason Voorhees. Six foot seven. Oh, so he's a bigger than Jason. A bit bigger. Mike Myers is very similar to Jason Voorhees, but he doesn't have the protective hockey mask, and so because of that, he's got that weird, weird William Shatner mask thing going yeah. on. His mask isn't, it's not sturdy, but it's, at six foot seven, it's so high up there. I mean, I'm six even. I'm not gonna kick him in the head. And I'm afraid punching him wouldn't do enough. Does he get the knife? Well, let's go ahead and go yeah. and say Mike Myers has the knife this time. I, I know this sounds terrible, but I would say uh, I would say some form of point karate because you don't want to stay in there for too long. So you're gonna bounce around him. He's just gonna kind of look at you. Maybe like he takes a step and you try and scoop his foot and punch him in the body or something. Maybe he'll fall on the knife and you're like, oh yes. There's a movie, I Am Legend with Will Smith and like he does like have this moment where he like messes up. He falls after getting out of a trap and it stabs him in the thigh. In that scene, you're like, that would really suck. Yep, that, that could happen. That would suck. That would put a real damper on the whole situation. He's gonna mess up his golf swing at the very least. Which is really what's important at the end of all this. I don't know how Mike Myers' golf swing is. He's probably great at the drive. He's a long game kind of guy. He's probably like a little short tempered at the putt. You know, he's breaking clubs. So it's, it's a problem, yeah, I, I think. Mean, I'm imagining him not being very, uh, being pretty crappy with his fine motor skills. Very just like. <laughs> you give him a club and you're like, all right, Mike, you're up to putt. And he's like, you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, last one on the list, Freddy Krueger. Obviously, horror movie icon, but he's got so many things in his favor. One, this fight could happen literally any way, shape, or form because it's probably happening in your sleep. Okay. The other thing is he's got the glove. He's got the love glove. And so because he has the glove, you got to deal with that. And side note, Freddy has also fought a kickboxer. Messes him up, right? Yeah. But it, the fight ends because she wakes up. The fight doesn't end because she finished the fight. This is hard. So he's only five foot nine. So I'd have a decent bit of reach on him. Am I able to lucid dream? I would say yes, because every time Freddy does wind up getting like pieced up in one way or another, it's always because the person has a lucid dream. So I'm going to be in bad shape already because I wake up all the time with like the thing where you can't move and like there's somebody in the room. Oh, yeah, dude, that is terrifying. Room. Oh, God, it's the worst. There's been multiple times where I thought somebody was outside of my window, and, like, I could see them, and then I just, I'm like, oh, oh, like, I can, I'm actually looking into the real world, but my brain is, like, in a halfway between the two state where I can't move my body. That's the worst. I think they're called night terrors. Already I'm off to a bad start. There's no real, like answer for the whole dream thing that I can think of. I'm picking Tai Chi. 
So Tai Chi dudes, I don't know this for sure, but I would imagine that if they start sleeping, in their dream they can like fly. And they're like essentially vision in their sleep. They're like air bending. Like an astral projection kind of thing where they can meditate yeah. so hard that they're just in a lucid state. Just Tai Chi it up, man. Little nice slow movements in the park. Then all of a sudden Freddy pops up. Then you gotta piece him up with your Tai Chi balls, you know? Just... I actually kind of like that answer. I think... I think Tai Chi would be the way to go there. There's no real reason behind it. At the end of the day, I think that your mind is working in a very good way to be equipped to fight any of these horror movie villains. And if this one does well, we'll definitely come back to the table with a couple more. As always, I absolutely love your content. Do me a favor as we on the sign out, just tell people how they can find you, where they can see your stuff. Search Sensei Seth on anything YouTube, whatever you see first that catches your fancy, click on it, watch it. That's all I ask. I'll catch you later, brother. Keep the martial arts legit. Things just haven't been the same. Living strange since my baby joined that dojo. Joined up McDojo. Now she tries to speak.